Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we are looking at this a Gibson Les Paul Standard 1950s model. We're going to try and figure out why these guitars are so good. Because they are. They really are. This guitar is a current offering in the Gibson catalog. Of course this is a left-handed model and I purchased it at Southpaw Guitar Shop in Houston. And I really do think that this is an example of Gibson at their finest. A little history about me is that in my youth I was a Stratocaster player. As you can see I've got a Stratocaster behind me. This is my latest Strat. It's an American Vintage II 1961 Stratocaster, which I purchased earlier this year. So I've only had that guitar for six or seven months, yet I've had this for over three years. And despite the excitement of getting the new Strat, I still find myself pulling out this Les Paul and playing it. It's just that good. This is the fourth Les Paul that I've owned. Technically it's the fifth, but it's the fourth Gibson Les Paul that I've owned. I do have an Epiphone Les Paul, similar model, that uh, you may have seen in recent videos of mine. But as far as Gibson goes, this is my fourth Les Paul, and I'll give you a quick history of the Les Pauls I've owned in the past. Les Paul number one was purchased around 2001, and it was an impulse buy that I made at MarsMusic.com. Does anyone remember Mars Music? Well, they went out of business around 2002. I was browsing their website and I discovered that a lot of their high-end left-handed electric guitars they had slashed the price on. They just wanted to clear the inventory, I guess. And so I purchased a guitar there. It was a Gibson Les Paul Classic with a gold top. And the price was too good to pass up. They actually had it for $400 less than the right-hand model. It was one of the few times when being left-handed had an advantage. So I snatched that one up. It was a beautiful guitar, really nice, and it was my introduction to Gibson. Well, I owned a Stratocaster at that time that I was playing a lot, and when I got the Les Paul, I would play both guitars. I'd go back and forth between the two, and I found it difficult to adjust when I switched guitars. The Gibson, well, it's not very ergonomic. A Stratocaster has lots of curves, a belly cut, and it kind of wraps around you. It fits to your body really nice. It's comfortable, and it's what I was used to. A Gibson Les Paul, I think their idea was to take the basic acoustic guitar shape and make it into a solid body. It has squared off sides, very flat back. It's heavy. It's kind of unbalanced and not very comfortable to sit and hold. I guess standing with a strap on is a little better. Despite the ergonomic disadvantage, I was still excited about having a Les Paul, but the Gibson has a slightly shorter scale length than the Fender. So I would find myself bending the strings way beyond the desired pitch, and that was one reason I found it difficult to adjust to. And the shorter scale length, it just felt a little toyish to me back in those days. Anyway, I soon realized that it really wasn't the guitar for me and that I might have been better off spending that money on something else. So I put that guitar up for sale on eBay, and I sold it for about the same amount that I paid for it, so no loss there. After that, as I continued to play my Stratocaster, I always had an interest in the Gibsons and the Les Pauls and was keeping my eye out. It wasn't until 2013 that Gibson introduced the Tribute series, and on Southpaw Guitar's Facebook page, they posted a picture of a 2013 Les Paul Future Tribute and I was quite taken with that. So I went down to their shop and played it, and I liked it, so I brought it home. The advantages to that guitar were that it was a very basic stripped-down Les Paul. It had a plain top, no binding. It was very unadorned, <laughs> so it was an inexpensive one. It did have 57 classic pickups in it, which I liked, and they were zebra pickups with the black and white uh, coils, so it was cool looking. One thing about it is that it had really weird tuners. It had Steinberger style tuners, so it didn't have tuning pegs out to the side. It had little knobs in the back that you would turn and the 
string post would either move up or down, pulling the string in or loosening it up. Kind of really odd looking, but uh, they actually worked very, very well. That was a fun guitar to play. I liked it a lot and I kept it for several years. Well, while I was quite happy playing that, I always kind of had a desire for a more substantial Les Paul, something with a flamey top, binding, and nicer appointments. You know how it is. You always want something new. Les Paul number three came about in 2019. I was browsing the American Musical Supply website, and I noticed that they had the previous year's model, the 2018 standard high performance models, the left-handed ones they had slashed the price on. And I mean, not just a little bit, but they were like half the price that they would have been a year earlier. So I made a phone call and double checked that everything was on the up and up. It was a new guitar <laughs> and they were just getting rid of their left-handed inventory. So that was an impulse purchase. I ordered the guitar. That was a strange guitar. The one I ordered had a hot pink fade finish. It's the kind of guitar that had no pickup rings and you could adjust the height of the pickup through some screws in the back. It had robot tuners. It had push-pull pots. Everything here was push-pull for coil tapping or splitting, putting the pickups in or out of phase. And in single coil mode, you could select whether you wanted the inner coils or the outer coils. And beyond that, I never messed with it, but behind the back plate, there was a dip switch where you could change the configuration of all that stuff. Quite complicated. They were just trying to be as versatile as possible. I'm not sure who their target audience was. They were Seems like they were trying to please everybody. And honestly, I think at that time, Gibson was kind of losing its way with all of these oddly specced guitars. Still good instruments, but not really what the mass public wanted. While I kept that guitar, I still had the 2013 Future Tribute, and I was playing them both, trying to decide which one I would keep. Well, wouldn't you know it, that I sold the 2018 High Performance guitar on Reverb, and again, I sold it for about the same amount I paid for it, so no loss there. I kind of would have liked to have kept it, but it was just a little too extreme for my taste. I'm a more traditional person. And this brings us to Les Paul number four, which I'm holding right here. Now, it seems to me that around 2018, when Gibson was putting out all these funky guitars, is, is the time that their new CEO came on board, James J.C. Curley. And it's my understanding that he did a lot of good things for the company. He kind of set them back on track. It was shortly after he came on board that they went back to putting out Les Paul standards, 1950s models, 1960s models, what you would expect, and probably what the majority of people wanted from Gibson. And at the same time, I believe their quality control had improved and the price was lowered on these guitars they dropped the price of the Les Paul standard when these models came out, which is kind of unheard of in the industry. So it was really good for the company. It was good for the consumer. So I went down to South Paul Guitar Shop and I took my 2013 Future Tribute with me to offer in trade and they gave me a fair deal on that. I played a few of the Gibsons that they had and I came out with this one and I've been very happy with it ever since. And I think it's a keeper. I think it's a great guitar. I think Gibson has gone back to their roots and are doing things right again. The very traditional appointments on here appeal to me and it's a beautiful top, beautiful finish. Everything is nicely done. The craftsmanship is excellent. Now I wouldn't guarantee that every single one is gonna be perfect, but this is a good one. And all the ones I looked at at Southpaw that day that I was there were, they all seem to be quite excellent. The burst bucker pickups just sound fantastic. They can really scream and squeal when you want them to. And they clean up nicely. It's a good guitar for all types of music. days I acquired an Epiphone Les Paul, a 1950s standard model also, which I wanted to compare with this one. And I've done um, a blindfold test between the two. There's a video on my channel if you want to see that. 
it was uh, pretty silly, but uh, it was fun to do and quite revealing to me. And I found out that I did like the sound of this guitar better than the other one. As far as playability goes, I couldn't really tell the difference. Something about this guitar, it, it just has some mojo that the Epiphone lacks and that uh, you won't find on other guitars like the Fender Stratocasters and so forth. <laughs> Well, thanks for joining me today and checking out this guitar. Let me know in the comments below what you think about Gibson Les Pauls. What's your favorite model? What do you think about the current lineup? And do you agree with me that going back to their roots with guitars like this was a step in the right direction for the company? Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Stay tuned for more guitar related videos. Until next time, I've been James Caldwell. I think the flame maple on the top was the most beautiful of all the guitars I saw there that day. So, you know, little things like that make it seem even better.